Hi, welcome to Exchange Backups for the Unitrend System Administration course. By the end of this module, you'll be able to determine which backup approach to use based on how Exchange is implemented. You will also be able to configure and run an Exchange Backup job using Unitrend's best practices. Let's take a look at determining your backup approach. How you backup your Exchange server really depends on the implementation of your Exchange environment, and we're going to break that down for you in the next couple of slides. We also have to consider your data retention and data recovery requirements. What are your recovery point objectives? How frequently do you need to back up your machines to cover those RPOs? We're going to take a look at both of those two first objects in relation to Unitrend's best practices and give you some guidance on how to set up the po best possible recovery for your Exchange servers. So your backup approach really depends on how you've implemented Exchange. So if you're running Exchange prior to 2000 or running Exchange on a NAS, then you need to make sure you're running a native backup and then run Unitrend's file level backups through our file level agent. See the file level backups module for more details on running that file level agent. You'd go through your Exchange, set up some maintenance routine to dump out the native flat file to the machine and pick that up through the Unitrend's file level backups. Now, if you're running Exchange 2000, you can run our legacy Unitrend's agent. It's a separate in agent that gets installed when you install our normal agent. It detects Exchange 2000, puts a separate little installer in there that helps you manage and schedule the Exchange and backup environment from the client side. It's not done through the web browser for Exchange 2000. It's done through the client. Now, if you're running Exchange 2003 and 2007, and you need granular backup control, then you probably want to go ahead and use our Unitrends Exchange agent, our Unitrends application agent for Exchange. All right, now, if you're running on VMware or Hyper-V, you have another choice that's application aware, but if you're not, then you need to use the Unitrends Exchange agent. If it's a physical Exchange server, then you have to use our agent to back up those Exchange databases. All right, now, if it is running on VMware or Hyper-V, if it's running a single server, if it's running a DAG, you have a couple options there too. So if it's a single server, you can back it up using Application Aware during a virtual snapshot. You can just turn on Application Aware if it's a single server instance of Exchange. But if it's running a DAG, you have to back it up using the Unitrends agent once again, the Unitrends application agent for Exchange. A nice little chart to help break that down depending on your version. Now, the Exchange application backup protects just your Exchange data, by the way. When you use the Unitrends application agent for Exchange, it's only grabbing your Exchange databases, the EDB, the STM, and the transaction log files for Exchange. You may want to create additional backups to be able to recover the whole server. So the agent is going to go in and back up just those EDMs, the STMs, the transaction logs, and then the file level or the hypervisor snapshot backup you're going to run will protect the operating system, the boot volume, the local file and folder structure, the application that's underneath there. So if you need to recover, you can recover the database through the agent and you can recover the OS through integrated bare metal or virtual recovery or virtual instant recovery. And you can even use Windows instant recovery through our agent as well too. And we'll keep databases up to date through the agent in some cases. When we look at setting up your Exchange backups, to set them up, you'll need to make sure you verify and or install all the required components. We're going to break those down for you here. Make sure you configure environment as specified for your specific version and configuration of Exchange. We just had that little chart. We're going to go into a little bit more detail here in the next couple of slides. Also, you're going to want to make sure you consider your storage and free space requirements once again, about two times the size of the backup size. I got to be able to keep the newest full and bring the next full in. You do have to run weekly fulls across the exchange. Your recovery options are really going to help you select what backup types you run. In most cases for exchange, you're going to run fulls with incrementals. In some cases, you might want to run just fulls with differentials. Uh, if you're only running them once a day, uh, you might as well just run fulls with differentials. It's also going to depend on the size and growth and the, the database size and rate of change. You may want to run more frequent incrementals to truncate those logs and keep the databases smaller. If you don't have a lot of growth, you want the fastest recovery possible, you probably just want to run fulls with differentials. 
We're going to talk about some of those backup types as we move forward here, too. We're also going to learn how to create those recommended backup jobs. And we start with verifying in the installed or required components. Once again, there is a VSS Rider for Exchange, and there's the VSS Rider service. Both those have to be running and in automatic mode. There's the latest Microsoft Service Pack. If you're running Exchange 2003, make sure you're using Microsoft Service Pack 2. The Unitrends Application Agent, if you're running 2000 Exchange, once again, there's that legacy agent. Check the admin guide on more details on how that legacy agent really works. If you're running a clustered environment, make sure you have the Unitrends system and the agent versions are both 6.4 or greater. And then for incremental backups to run incremental against your Exchange databases, there is no incremental forever. You still have to run weekly folds against Exchange databases. You have to make sure your system is running 7.5 and the agents are 7.5 or greater as well too. Most people, we really try to encourage you to run the newest version on your appliance, the Unitrend system, and the newest version within the agent, which now we're up into 9. All right, but these are the minimal versions that they'll run on. There's a little note down there at the bottom. To do item restores, make sure you have crawl on track. It allows you to browse into the recovery point mounted off the appliance. I can point to the EDB and bring back itemized content, ex export PSTs, import PSTs, any content from a user's inbox, calendar entries, con contacts, notes, tasks, and of course any of their inbox content. Very powerful software. Check the licensing and check the restore module for Exchange for more information on the Crow on track as well too. Now when we talk about Exchange 2010 and 2013, we do have a couple backup recommendations here for you based on configuration once again. It is recommended to run a full and differential or a full and incremental backups, but you can't run both. You can't run a weekly full, daily differential, and hourly transaction logs through the day. It doesn't work that way. Because of the logging with Exchange, you can only run fulls and differentials or fulls and incrementals, but not both. You can't put them both in the same schedule. All right, now, if you're configured for non-clustered, doesn't matter. You run either of those. If you're running a DAG, though, we recommend that you back up your lowest priority DAG copy. And then backing up the active DB, the active database, really isn't recommended. To keep your resources down, we want to go after the backup copy. And you really only want to back up your active database if it's the only database running, the only copy running. For some reason or another, it's the only active one up. You've lost copies of the other replicas or something. And, you, and to keep it up and to make sure you've got a copy, you might have to once in a while back up that single running copy. Only if necessary, though. If you're running Exchange 2007 in non-clustered, right, once again, non-clustered, you can run full or differential or full and incremental backups. Once again, check your agent release, check your Unitrend system releases. But if it's non-clustered and incremental or differential, Make sure circular logging should be disabled. And if you're running a full, circular logging should be enabled. Now, running a differential, that automatic log truncation, it, it does not occur. Only on fulls. With Exchange 2007, when you are clustered, there's a few more recommendations down here, once again, based on your configuration. So if you're running continuous replication for cluster, you're running CCR, and standby continuous SCR, then you can run a full and differential or full and incremental backups, but once again, not both. You can't run both because of the way the logging happens in there. Now, if you're running local continuous, you want to make sure you back up the active node and you want to back up, uh, run a full. Only run a full on any failover. Back up the active node on, on, on any failover. When we look at 2003, Run a full and differential only. We don't support incrementals for 2003. And if it's non-clustered, if using storage groups, you want to make sure you back up each storage group in the schedule one at a time. Make sure you're staggering those storage groups out in your schedules. If it is clustered, if it's single copy cluster, SCC, you want to add the cluster node and back up through the cluster node. Make sure you add the cluster node and back up through the cluster node, not the local IP address, not the local node IP. Make sure you're registering that cluster node IP. A few best practices for Exchange Server backups here. Want to make sure we exclude all active databases from file level backups. 
and now by default, our file level backups don't even try to grab them, but it is a good practice to still go in there and exclude your mailbox directories on your file level backups if you're running agent-based backups against them. Still a good idea. Now you can also add each Exchange server node to the Unitrend system using its native IP address. Once again, make sure you're doing your backups sometimes depending on the clustering configuration through the cluster node. Go back to that previous screen and check that out depending on what type of clustering you've got configured. Make sure you run a full application backup after you've added your Exchange node. Usually I recommend go to your smallest database and run a backup against it to make sure they're going to work and then schedule everything else out. Make sure you do not do any of the following. Make sure you never use a physical or virtual domain controller to host Exchange. That's a big one. That's also a Microsoft's kind of no-no as well too. Just It's too much on one server. It causes the incrementals to, do, to be too big. It's just too much. Also, you want to make sure you never add the cluster host name and IP as a separate client. You want to use the cluster host name and IP address to access the Exchange server. You want to back up multiple copies of the same database simultaneously. Never do that. Enable circular logging in production. Never do that. That's per Microsoft. That's for emergencies and maintenance only. Once again, circular logging turned on. You can really only run fulls. All right, so make sure you're paying attention to some of those best practices there for you for Exchange Server Backups as well, too. Next, we're going to watch the how-to video for Create and Manage an Exchange Backup Job.